Welcome to our channel. Are you in the market for a new pair of running shoes? Look no further because we have scoured the latest releases and put them to the test to bring you the best running shoes of 2023. We have included links in the description box. Let's get started. At number one is Brooks Ghost 15. It's turning 15 and you know it and adore it. The Ghost has been our go-to suggestion for newcomers and runners searching for a daily shoe for more than a decade. The Ghost is a tried and true everyday trainer, according to our testers, who also attested to its dependability. A runner who had previously tried the Adidas Ultra Boost and the Asics Gel Keanu commented, the cushioning felt just right. I could sense a little sponginess about it, yet it felt firm at the same time. The soft give that conforms to the bottom of your foot as the hardness of the foam offers support and shock absorption is the sponginess our tester is referring to. In the midsole of the Ghost 14, DNA Loft, a compression-molded EVA material, was previously employed. DNA Loft V2 now has a softer, lighter feel. At number 2 is a 6 Gel Keano 29. One of the top stability shoes we've tried, the Keano has been a staple of the A6 portfolio for many years. For the 29, A6 swapped off the plastic plate at the back of the shoe for a combination of old light truss foam. There is no longer a requirement for any squishy gel in the forefoot because soft and springy Flight of Foam Blast Plus is layered on top and through the toe. The heel clip is also reduced in size, making this Keano the lightest version ever by almost half an ounce. The Keano is still a very supportive ride, so don't worry. Instead of only the midsole, that support is now more uniformly baked into the upper and outsole. A lace's reinforced substance helps you bring your foot back to the center. Like a thin guide rail, extra rubber on the outsole extends higher up the medial side of the shoe. It feels more natural than the 28th edition of the shoe, according to both overpronators and neutral runners on our wear test crew. The Gel Keano 29 resembles my foot almost like an extension. The transition from the midfoot to the toe is flawlessly seamless, and it is incredibly supportive and accommodating of my orthotics, said to one tester who previously battled in frustratingly hard stability pairs. One more runner said, the midfoot has a lovely transition to toe off that lets me run in a good rhythm. At number three is Mizuno Wave Rider 25. A significant turning point for the rider occurs at age 25. I've worn the Rider since its 13th iteration, and I can say without a doubt that this is the softest, most cushioned Rider I've ever worn. This boot is due to the company fulfilling the promise it made to us in the Rider 24, a full-length layer of delightfully soft energy foam in the midsole. The midsole of earlier Riders had a variety of foams, both above and below the wave plate, ranging from the harder euphoric to the x spot based on TPU beats. Despite being cozy underfoot, the shoe's ride seemed a little jumbled due to the mix of different foams. The ride is smoother and more reliable with energy foam alone, especially when combined with the 25's brand new wave plate made of castor bean. The Rider 24's plate was constructed at a lower amplitude, assisting in the return of less energy with each foot strike, while more precisely mimicking the shape of the arch. It's a smooth, bouncy ride that's ideal for lengthy runs when you'll be standing for extended periods of time. At number 4 is Saucony Triumph 20. Since the Triumph 17th edition, I've participated in every new iteration, and each has amazed me. The 20 shoes are set as my default pair on my Strava account out of the 50 that I now wear on a regular basis, meaning I grab the 20 on days when picking a shoe involves too much work. I'm confident that the Triumph will perform well whether I choose to move quickly or slowly. The Triumph maintains a bouncy ride and all-around comfort on a constant basis, which is one incentive to keep standing it. Starting with the Triumph 17, PWR on was replaced by PWR on Plus, a TPU-based midsole from Saucony. PWR on Plus is now much more lightweight and responsive thanks to the brand. This workhorse's ability to balance cushioning without compromising rebound is what makes it so adaptable. I was able to sprint through fartlek sessions on the road and intervals on the track because to the excellent energy return of the midsole and the rocker design of the sole. The Triumph is a great option for heavy mileage as well because of the shoe's all-around comfort, which is enhanced by the firm PWR on Plus midsole and sock liner, as well as the plush tongue and heel collar of the breathable mesh upper. The more compliant nature of the improved PWR on Plus prompted Saucony to adjust the stack height, which increased the heel toe offset from 8 to 10 millimeters. At number 5 is a 6 Gel Cumulus 24. The Cumulus has significantly changed from the hefty trainer it once was in the previous few years. 
The shoe weighed more than 12 ounces, for a men's size 9 a decade ago. The durability we've always admired is still present, but it's lighter now and more dynamic and enjoyable. The cumulus heel-to-toe drop has been reduced to 8 mm, which is a significant adjustment. It was 10 mm. According to a 6, the modification was designed to improve the ride of the shoe. Without disentangling the other, updates a thicker midsole, new foam, and a change to the geometry of the sole, we cannot conclusively attribute the performance of the shoe to the drop. The bouncy cushioning won unanimous acclaim from testers for providing all the protection they required on extended runs without feeling overly soft. The lighter, springier flight foam blast midsole, which has allowed a 6 to change its traditional construction methods, is what gives this sensation. All of the plastic midfoot bridges that the firm used to insert into the soles have been eliminated. Without the additional components, the underfoot sensation and transition from heel strike to toe-off have improved since foam is so much livelier and more responsive than EVA. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit the subscribe button, press the bell icon, and leave a comment if you found this video helpful. Click on the links in the description to find out more about the products.